Peace be with you. I begin in the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. My name is Alan Kiesler, and I'm sitting here in America, beautiful America. <laughs> and I'm always thinking about Pakistan, beautiful Pakistan. <laughs> Pakistan is not an ordinary country. America is also not an ordinary country. But Pakistan is a very, very special place. You could say chosen land, holy land. Medina Isani, the second Medina. For whatever reason, I have been blessed by the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and by our Lord Jesus Christ, by all the great prophets and teachers, to understand the purpose and destiny of Pakistan. So I want to share that today in English because many English-speaking people have also asked me about Pakistan and I try to explain Pakistan is not what you think <laughs> because in the West especially people have a very wrong idea of Pakistan as some haven of terrorists. No. Pakistan is the land of the pure. Literally, Pakistan means the land of the pure. And the people of Pakistan are very pure-hearted, very good people, very sincere, very hospitable. The most hospitable people in the world. I've never seen any place where people go out of their way just to try to help you and befriend you. And So Pakistan is a very special place, but we're going to talk about the divine destiny of Pakistan now. Why was Pakistan created? Many people do not know that Pakistan was created actually on the order of God, specifically on the order of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to Qaidi Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Rahmatullah The founder of Pakistan is usually considered to be Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the Qaidi Azam, who is not an ordinary person either. <laughs> He is a very special spiritual personality and peace be on him too because he is the creator of Pakistan under the order of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, this is the story. In 1934, Qaidi Azam was in London because he was a worker for the unity and freedom of India in the early part of the 20th century. But he saw that things aren't going very well, so he decided, because he was a lawyer, to go to England and work in the parliament, work in London, to do what he could for the freedom of India, and specifically for the success of the Muslims. So. He was there working very diligently, very expertly. He was a constitutional lawyer, so he knew exactly what to do to promote the cause of the independence of India and the freedom of the Muslims especially from either British or Hindu control. And one night he was resting in bed, sleeping, and he was awakened by his bed shaking. And he wondered what's happening. Uh, but then it stopped and he didn't know what had happened. So he went back to sleep. Then a little while later his bed was shaking again, even more. It was so strong he thought there was an earthquake. So he got up out of bed. He went out of his apartment to see. His, when there's an earthquake people usually try to get out of the building or so he thought other people may be getting up also and leave, but there was no noise, nobody else was out, middle of the night, so he didn't know what had happened, so he went back to sleep again. A third time, his bed was shaking, even more <laughs> violently. <laughs> so he woke up, and this time he saw a person standing at the foot of his bed. So he immediately got up and he stood up, he could see this is a very honorable noble person. So uh, he asked, who are you in English? Because he was in England. And this personality said, 
I am your holy prophet Muhammad. So immediately Qaid you know, folded his hands, bowed his head, my lord, what can I do for you? And the holy prophet, peace be upon him, said, uh, I want you to go back to India and to take up the leadership of the Muslims in their freedom struggle and don't worry I will be with you I will help you and support you and you will succeed in this endeavor God willing inshallah so immediately the next morning Qaidi Azam began making all arrangements to finish up his affairs in England and he took off and went by boat to Bombay and when he arrived there all of his friends were so happy to see him and he did exactly what the Holy Prophet had ordered he took up very seriously the extremely difficult task of working both for the freedom of India from the British control and for the freedom of the Muslims from Hindu domination and he succeeded miraculously in creating an independent Islamic country Pakistan Pakistan Zindabad so this is the true story <laughs> of how Pakistan was established most people don't know this even Pakistanis <laughs> may not have heard this story but it's true I have no doubt myself anyway what is the destiny of Pakistan why was Pakistan created in this way uh, the real purpose of the creation of Pakistan was to establish the land of the pure of sincere pure-hearted people to establish truth justice unity love a very caring humanitarian government which would not be run by selfish people like almost all the governments of the world are <laughs> but would be run by true believers people who know and love God and who fear God who know that we cannot do anything wrong or we will be punished <laughs> that is taught in every religion but nobody is following it you know especially the politicians so that is the purpose of Pakistan to establish a divine government based on the Word of God not based on human ideas so and what will happen how will this happen God willing it will happen uh, very soon it's already started gradually the corrupt politicians will be removed and sincere people will come into power and they will establish a system of government based upon justice based upon truthfulness based upon compassion based upon especially love that is the real meaning of Pakistan that's the real meaning of Islam I just see a comment by Manjeet Singh Karturiya. Sat Sri Akal, Alan. Sat Sri Akal, Manjeet Singh Karturiya. Sardar Ji. <laughs> I uh, just happened to see that because yesterday I said something extremely important. You know, often I don't plan. I don't know what I'm going to say. These words just come out of my mouth. So yesterday I was talking in Urdu about Khalistan and Pakistan. <laughs> Khalis is also a Persian word which means pure Pak is also a Persian word which means pure so Pakistan and Khalistan are the same <laughs> land of the pure <laughs> so when the Sikh community the followers of Guru Nanak and Guru Gobind Singh see all the ten great gurus when they come together with the good people of Pakistan Muslims or even Christians or Hindus whoever when all the people of Pakistan from both the Muslim and Sikh communities especially and also the others they come together in unity then Pakistan Khalistan will be established the true religion eternal religion one religion whatever you call it Deen Islam or Sikh or Snatan Dharam the Word of God the law there's so many different words but the religion is only one so Manjit Singh Karturiya Duaon mein yaad rakha karyaan 
सरदार जी तुसी अभी मेरे दुआ करें हम सब दुआ करें करते रहें सब के लिए और सो यस आई जस्ट हैपन टू सी मंजीत सिंह कामेंट सो यस दिस इज द डेस्टिनी ऑफ पाकिस्तान नॉट ओनली फॉर मुस्लिम्स for six also after all guru nanak was born in pakistan <laughs> pakistan is a holy place for six also so when the six and the muslims in pakistan understand that the other religion is also true is actually my religion it's not against my religion it's not separate from my religion then pakistan will become the real pakistan and the whole world will become pakistan the whole world will see this divine perfect country based on spiritual principles based on eternal religious principles based on truthfulness based on justice based on love and compassion this is pakistan so this is khalistan this is pakistan so this will happen inshallah god willing it will not be long we will see the change in pakistan All right so I'm going to see some comments I just happened to see Rana Rana Zio Rahman it was developed to give a new system and policies to the world because it was developed for all not only for muslims if you take a look at the last short speech of Pakistan's father M A Jinnah then you will come to know thank you very much Rana Zio Rahman sahib <laughs> This is exactly correct. Pakistan is not only for Muslims. Pakistan is for all people, all sincere people, all good-hearted people, all God-fearing people, all people who want to do what is right. This is the instruction of Kaidi Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah rahmatullahi. That Pakistan was ordered by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, Prophet Pab- that is Allah's will this is God's will for the world that this wonderful country should be established the land of the pure the land of peace and love and justice and truth <laughs> where terrorism is finished <laughs> where satanism is finished where the zionists are finished where the cabal the one world order plan of the satanists will be destroyed inshallah by pakistan that is the meaning of pakistan land of the pure and destroying the impure because these two are always struggling there is always a struggle between truth and falsehood there is always a struggle between goodness and evil so now the time has come which has been prophesied for thousands of years the last days the day of judgment the time for the establishment of the kingdom of god on earth and world peace that time is now and pakistan is to play the leading role in this wonderful establishment of the rule of god on earth that is my understanding that is what i have been told by great spiritual personalities so i have no doubt about it thank you very much rana zio rahman sahib for that wonderful comment Gohar Jafri says I like the way you pray by calling the names of Panchtan Pak oh I think I already saw that Yes so we pray for all traditions through all traditions not only Sunni not only Shia not only Muslim also Christian not only Catholic not only Protestant also Hindu <laughs> not only Brahmin <laughs> not only vaishnav not only shaivite not all and buddhist also not only theravada not only mahayana <laughs> all buddhists and taoists all people of all religions of all denominations of all sects we should pray from our heart and that will bring success and peace to all of humanity All right, let's see what other comments do we have. Sabika Sheikh, Pakistan is going to be rock in near future. Feeling proud in Naya Pakistan. Yes, I agree. 
I agree, although it's not going to be easy. Don't think it's easy. This is going to be a great, great struggle. The greater the enemy, the greater the victory. So this people that we are fighting against are very, very powerful, unlimitedly wealthy. These international banksters, the Rothschilds and Rockefellers and even the royal families of England and other European countries, they are fighting against Pakistan, <laughs> against the truth, the universal truth of Pakistan, not Muslim truth, no, this is universal truth. So Pakistan is going to be a rock in the near future, yes. Thank you very much. Manjit Singh Katuria, Kab Are Hai Mere Paas? Kitte Hai Sardar Ji? Tusi? Mada? America Chai? To Aao. Inshallah, Hum Milenge. Saad Ishtiak, Pakistan Ka Matlab Kya? La Ilaha Illallah. At time of Pakistan, Freedom Pakistan Ka Maksad Kya? Muhammad Rasulullah. Time is coming soon, Inshallah. Oh, very nice comment. This is a very famous saying in Pakistan. Pakistan, the matlab kya? What is the meaning of Pakistan? La ilaha illallah. There is only one God. There is no God but God. And Muhammad Rasulullah. Pakistan ka maksad kya? Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad is the, peace be upon him, Muhammad is the prophet of God. Yes. But I want to add, in about 1983, I don't remember exact time, uh, I was in the small town, small city of Ghortki in northern Sindh. And early one morning, I woke up very early and was praying, meditating, doing zikr. And a great personality came to me. I didn't know who it was. I could tell it was a great Sufi. And he taught me. He told me in Punjabi, Pakistan the matlab hai. Just like Pakistan ka matlab hai, la 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 la. He said, Pakistan the matlab hai. Pakistan the matlab kya? Pakistan the matlab hai. O Pakistan, jithe hazuri pak, ude pak musahib denal, islami pak phir kaim kar denge. So what is the meaning of Pakistan? There is no God but God. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the prophet of God. But also Pakistan means that land of the pure. Pakistan means the land of the pure. Pakistan means that land of the pure where the holy prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, along with his holy companions, will re-establish pure Islam. So pure Islam means peace. It means submission to God. It means truth and love. This is what is going to be happening in Pakistan, God willing. So that is the real meaning. Pakistan ka matlab kya? La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Or wo Pakistan, jahan. Islami Pak Fir Kaim Ho Jayaga inshallah. And when pure Islam is reestablished in Pakistan, the whole world will look in astonishment and will say, Let us also become like Pakistan. Please instruct us, tell us how can we have peace and love in our countries too, like yours. And the whole world will become Pakistan. <laughs> the land of the pure. <laughs> okay. Khurram Salim, thanks for sharing your thoughts. Just a request to you. Please wish birthday to my friend Chatta Saab, a.k.a. TTG. Happy birthday, Chatta Saab, TTG. <laughs> okay, Munazar, Munaza, Mazhar, Mazhar. May Allah bless my country. Amin. Amin, Amin, Amin. May Allah bless Pakistan. May Allah bless America. God bless America. May Allah bless the whole world. Even <laughs> Israel, <laughs> India. <laughs> Whatever countries we feel are our enemies, we should pray. May Allah bless them. May they also become land of the pure. <laughs> 
Yes, may Pakistan be blessed by Allah, may the whole world, and not only this planet, let us pray for peace and love in all the planets, Venus and Mars, there are people living there too. That knowledge has been kept secret, but so may all the universe become peaceful. <sighs> Muhammad Shafin, the time has come, mashallah Mubarak, yes. Now is the time that we have been waiting for for thousands of years. Wakas Umar Gorsi, have you heard about Jesse Ventura or heard him talking? Yes, I have, have heard uh, Jesse Ventura talk. Sajad Muhammad, love you, sir. Naya Pakistan Mubarak. Okay. Tahir Laldin, last hope is the awaited one. Yes. Okay, Pita Das, Rama Rama Ishwara, huh. Ishwara Allah Tera Naam, Sab Ko Sampati De Bhagawan. Ram means Rahim, Ram or Rahim Ekiya. Yes, thank you very much, Pita Das Ji. Dhanyavad. Muhammad Adil, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasul. Muhammad Rafi Khan, Babaji, how do we make the... Oh, I am... Somebody is doing some very loud noise over here. I'm going to move away. Try to get away from that loud noise there. I hope I don't lose my signal because the signal... Mm. Okay, let us continue here. Looking for... Some more comments. Muhammad Rafi Khan says, Baba Ji, how do we make those people understand that are against Pakistan army and don't understand the true meaning of Pakistan? That how do we teach from the value teach them the value of Pakistan? What should be our words. Okay, very good question. Very, very wonderful question. Hmm. How do we make these people understand that, that are against Pakistan army and don't understand the true meaning of Pakistan? Yes. Many people are against the Pakistan army, not only around the world, but in Pakistan even, because of false propaganda that has been made by... Okay. I lost the signal there, but now we are back. I'm just trying to find another place where I might get the signal better than there. Okay, here we are. Um, where did that question go anyway? It was about the... Oh yes, here we are. Muhammad Rafi Khan, thank you for your very good question. So people don't understand the Pakistan army properly. Undoubtedly in the past, the army of Pakistan has been even tricked or misused or misguided uh, by CIA and other international engine agencies who were really satanic, unfortunately, I have to say that. Our American CIA was very, very evil. Now, praise God, it is becoming better. Good people are coming up in the CIA also. But the CIA was using the Pakistan army, sometimes by threatening, just like President Musharraf was threatened by Henry Kissinger, that if you don't do what we want in Afghanistan, uh, your country will be finished. So, so it's very, very difficult to be a general in the Pakistan army because people know that Pakistan is very powerful, so they want Pakistan to be on their side. Uh, so they may threaten or they may bribe. Politicians have been bribed tremendously. But in the last some years, good people have come up in the Pakistan army. General Rahil Sharif was the best, best person, general, who led the Pakistan army some years ago, and he brought about a great change in the Pakistan army. And although he had to leave, because the rule is that one does not remain in charge for more than, I think, two years or something, so, but he made sure that other good people came up also. So now the Pakistan army is a very, very good organization very dedicated to truth and justice. So, 
everyone needs to understand that. Uh, it's propaganda made by the Satanists, propaganda made by the Rothschilds and Rockefellers and by the Zionists. They have made propaganda against the Pakistan army, so don't believe them. Uh, Pakistan army is what is going to bring about, not only in Pakistan, unity and justice and truth, but all over the world will follow. So it's a very great, we can even say divine organization. The army of Pakistan is not an ordinary army. It's a spiritual, becoming more and more spiritual as more and more pure-hearted people, Muslims, and even non-Muslims, come up in the Pakistan army. So, how do we teach them the value of Pakistan? Um, just by explaining what I have just explained. That is all we can do. People may or may not accept, but this is the truth, I have no doubt. So, Saad Shafiq, I had a question yesterday regarding related to education. Do you think with personalities like yourself and probably others, because of your study regarding Islam and other religions, do you feel uh, Pakistan will in this time and age will make a new introduction in the education system like Muhammad Asad who was appointed by Qaid -e Azam when Pakistan was created for the Islamic department to introduce an education to create a new generation which was unfortunately not taken seriously by Liaqat Ali Khan may Allah forgive him what's your take on this yes Muhammad Asad was a great I believe he was German maybe he was a convert to Islam I'm quite sure if I am remembering correctly and Qaidi Azam appointed him to bring about a true Islamic educational system yes a very very good point and very very important point so we need to do this yes you are right there needs to be a new educational system not only in Pakistan but all over the world the current educational system is very bad especially in Pakistan <laughs> I've seen it myself in all, many parts of the world where the students are just taught to memorize some facts which are mostly lies anyway and then to reproduce them on the government exam and that's their education so-called no that's not education that's ignorance so education means to understand God and the purpose of God and to learn to love and serve God and to understand this world and to serve humanity and to serve the whole creation that's education <laughs> so yes you are very very right that we need a education based on spiritual principles so unfortunately that was not taken up by Liaqat Ali Khan Sahib uh, so we should take it up now and inshallah the government of Pakistan will now take this up and make a new educational system I will also do what I can to help if anybody wants my help Sajad or Sajad Muhammad, I think you are new Muslim because you read Kalima Taiba. Yes, I read Kalima. Since 2009, I have been reciting every day. <laughs> That's a long story. This came to me spiritually. Uh, I was teaching in Hong Kong at that time. And one morning I woke up and I heard, mm -hmm. I heard that music going on in my head and then I heard Ave Maria Grazia Plena Dominus Tecum Benedicta Tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. And then I heard, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha so I lost the signal there again, but I'll try to 
finish this up as soon as I can because I don't seem to be getting a, such a good signal now. All right, so I was saying that uh, in year 2009, when I was teaching in Chinese University Catholic Church, you might say the Rosary, uh, and then I heard, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And then I heard, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. Then, Shema Israel, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Like this, I heard this, prayers from different religious traditions. So, from that time, I started reciting every day. This rosary, and the Kalima, and the Hare Krishna, and the Shema Israel, so I lost the signal again there, but it's come back. Uh, I started saying all these prayers from different religious traditions every day. So from 2009, I've started reciting Kalima. And in fact, one other little wonderful addition, in 2012, that is three years later, I was very fortunate to have the ziyarat of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he told me at that time, you have been reciting the Kalima, hundreds of times by then. So you are already a Muslim. <laughs> so yes, I am now a Muslim since 2009 or 2012 or whenever. But I'm also a Christian. I'm also a Hindu. I'm also a Buddhist. I'm also a Jew. I'm also a Sikh. I think the best of all, frankly, Guru Nanak taught all religions are true. Religions should be not separate from each other. We should all be together. Whatever our religious background may be, we should all come together in love. So that is very, very important teaching. That is Guru Nanak's teaching and that is also my teaching. So I consider myself a follower of Guru Nanak, especially in that way. Uh, okay, and that is Pakistan also. Guru Nanak was born in Pakistan and Pakistan is the place where this will be established, God willing. Oneness of all of humanity through oneness of religion. There cannot be peace in the world until there is peace among the religions of the world. All right, so, Muhammad Shafin. Sir, what do you think Imran can play his part to improve Pakistan current condition? Very, very good question, very important question. What can Imran Khan do? Well, I've said this before, but I will repeat it. Imran Khan cannot do very much at this point himself. He needs to get rid of the corrupt politicians, even the ones in his own party. I'm sorry, I am keep getting cut off. So uh, I will just quickly say, you can look at my earlier videos if you want more details, but Imran Khan needs to get rid of the corrupt politicians, even in his own party. Then he can really improve the situation in Pakistan. And only with the help of the army can that be done, because the current corrupt politicians are very strong, very powerful, so they must be caught, arrested, tried in the courts, and put in jail and punished. That is what Iram, Imran needs to do that, if he wants to be successful, and then change the political system, get rid of this party system. Political party system is very, very bad. It's a satanic system. It is created by people who want to control countries falsely, by lying, deceit. So political parties must be gotten rid of. I'm afraid I have to go now, but thank you all very, very much. And we will... I'll look at one or two more questions. Hamad Khan Tartari. Sir, with due respect, I love my army, but we can't say that they got tricked by other agencies or misused our army, made them self to be used it, because as a nation we never profound and build character in ourselves. But now all blessing us, but we have to point out the mistake they had made and not repeat in future. Yes, mistakes were certainly made by army people, uh, but now that has changed. Praise God. <laughs> 
now there are good people in the army who have gotten good character and uh, it will take some time. Um, all right, I'm sorry that I have to end, but thank you all very much for listening and for your good questions and I will continue this. Uh, I have been doing these chats at 8 o'clock every morning in California, 8 o'clock evening Pakistan time. I hope I can continue these and as I did this morning and one other day at 7 o'clock I do my own spiritual uh, practices after doing the maas and other prayers I read some scriptures so I did that this morning and I think I will try to continue that also at 7 o'clock so I hope you can join me for those. May God protect us all.